Hello everyone, this is Abhishek Sharma. Welcome to Abhipedia. Today we will be discussing the next fundamental economic concept that is making rounds this year in, since the Economic Survey 2019. It is the mutually reinforcing virtuous cycle of growth. Now, this particular cycle we used to teach in our Abhima News economic classes since 2013-14. Now, what this cycle essentially is and where it comes from? See, as it is, there was an uh, economist, Gunnar Middle. So, he uh, talked about this cycle in his book about uh, developing economies, Asian drama. Now, I have adapted this cycle from his basic theory. So, this is mutually reinforcing virtuous cycle of economic growth. Basically, the economic survey 2019 stated that when we look at the economic growth happening today, a simple demand supply kind of equation cannot explain how the economic growth is essentially happening. Previously, we used to look at it like this, that as there is more demand in the economy coming up, there will be more supply for that demand and essentially the monetary value of goods and services thus produced, they will be increasing. This increasing monetary uh, value will then lead to economic growth. This was a very simple fundamental that was being taken into consideration. But it is essentially not happening in that simple correlation. Rather, for UPSC, if you look at the means questions that have been coming in 2018-19, they have asked questions like savings is one of the critical factors for economic growth. And sometimes, in, if you look at the economic survey 2019-2020, they have stressed upon investments being the critical factor for economic growth. So, essentially, it is not the only factor. They are critical, but there are other relevant factors also working in the play. And how are these correlated with each other? That's what we have to see if we need to understand how the economic growth in our country is actually taking place. So, in this today's cycle, I have tried to cul culminate few of these uh, parameters in the mutually reinforcing virtue cycle. Otherwise, this lecture will go on to three hours and that will be boring for most of you. So, I have limited those functionalities and uh, based on some limited characteristics only, we will be able to have a fair idea of how the economic growth in the country is actually taking place. All right. And in this fair idea, we'll be talking about certain data also. So it will be good if you integrate that data for your examination because this will help you in the means answer writing as well as your prelims question answers. Okay. So let's go on to the mutually reinforcing virtue cycle. Now, if you look at the board, there are four basic parameters that I have set that is national income, per capita income, savings and investment. The consideration is like this that if a country has high national income, then the per capita incomes will also be high because the basic formula relating these two is per capita income is national income divided by population. If people have more per capita incomes means one person is earning more, fair budget bhi se ho sakti hai, so that saving will be high. And if the savings are high, then the people will be able to invest more in the economy. Since they will invest more, you can have a higher growth rate. But this is not a very simple correlation. Many other things go into this basic correlation. So from national income to per capita income, if we think about this, there are two basic forces at play. One is population, other is the inequality. Now, if we recall the Oxfam report that came out in 2017, it stated that 90% of the wealth in India has been siphoned off by 10% of India's rich population. And rest of the wealth is for the rest of the population. So, if you go in this direction, there is a lot of inequality in terms of the wealth distribution and how that money is coming into people's pocket. Now, this inequality will definitely restrict the or will definitely question that who is actually saving in India or who is actually earning in India. Yes or no? So, if you look at the inequality in India, the one fair measure of this inequality is Gini coefficient. So, in that Gini coefficient, we have been progressively reducing inequality as far as the income inequality is concerned. So, World Bank measures this uh, Gini coefficient with respect to inequality and that Gini coefficient for India is right now somewhere near 0 0.347. This is for 2019. Previously, it used to be 0 0.36 around 2011. So, you can see very slow pace of inequality reduction has taken place and uh, income inequality is still a concern as far as per capita incomes are concerned. Now, population, so to speak, the best judge there is total fertility rate, TFR. So, here in India has reached the replacement levels that is 2.1. 
So this total fertility rate basically means how much uh, uh, will be the pop the uh, number of people that we already have. So hum do hamare do is the slogan. So how many children will a woman bear throughout her lifetime? So accordingly, it is like this. Some states it has gone below this to an extent of 1.6, 1.7. In some states, it's higher. But the average is now coming at the replacement level. So this is a stabilizing population that we have in India, but it's not yet a reducing population. Moreover, in the population, we today talk about that India has one of the highest youth percentage in terms of population. So there is certainly something positive to consider here that is demographic dividend. But this demographic dividend is not really coming up for India. Reason being the number of skilled individuals and uh, industry ready labor force is not there yet. So because of that, there are some troubles with respect to this equation as well. Now, going on from per capita income to saving, essentially, if you look at the parameters, there are three basic parameters, consumption, taxation and inflation, which will be the guiding aspect. See, the money that you have, first thing you have to do is pay taxes, whether direct taxes or indirect taxes have to be paid out of that money. Now, based on this taxes, of course, then the second aspect is consumption. Now, you can consume either goods or services. You can consume necessities or luxuries. If you look at the economic survey 2019, it has clearly stated this year that people in India are now consuming more services as compared to goods. They are consuming more luxuries as compared to necessities. So that kind of an expenditure behavior which is happening in India right now, that will definitely restrict your savings. Inflation, however, is under control. In India, the range of inflation that we must have is somewhere near 4% and plus minus 2% is the range allowed. So accordingly, that is under control even now. So that's not a big deal. But however, your taxation being high, India is a high tax jurisdiction as we know it from direct and indirect taxes, both point of view. So savings sort of get hindered because of this particular thing. So right now, our rate of saving as well in Indian economy is decreasing. If you look at from 2011 to 2019, we have come down in terms of saving from somewhere near 34% to the present saving rate of around 30%. And for an economy like India, which is still in the developing stage, the savings that we should have is around 40 to 45% so that we can then start investing for our growth. But however, that is not yet a possibility because if you look at the inequality aspect again, only few people are yet able to have their uh, savings sufficiently. The other, the middle class or the rising middle class is hardly able to save anything. Most of the expenditure goes into consumption expenditure. So because of that, the savings are low. Now, from saving to investment, the correlation is again through inflation, through your policy and what is the demand. Now, as far as inflation is concerned, if there is a high inflation in the economy, if you remember the law of supply, at higher prices, the supplier would like to supply more of goods and services. Now, as far as the supply is concerned, now in Indian economy, if you look at it from this point of view, the prices have been rising, but they are mostly in terms of food. Yes or no? Now, since the food prices are rising, they are not because of the implementation, uh, it is because of the supply side constraints. And most of that is constrained because of poor forward backward linkages in agriculture and we will consider that as it comes along. But anyhow, the inflation is there in the Indian economy and that inflation pushes people to go for investment rather than saving the money because as it is the inflation rate works against the saving rate. How does this happen? See, if there is 5% inflation, then the things that you get for 100 rupees today, you will be getting at 105 rupees later on. Yes. But if there is 4% interest rate, the money that you deposited, let's say 100 rupees today, you will be getting 104 rupees later on. Yes. So essentially, there is no point keeping the money in saving when the inflation rate is higher than your saving rate. So this way, it is better to invest. So that investment is there. But that's a kind of a negative impetus towards investment. Positive impetus is demand and policy. So as far as demand is concerned, it will decide how much investment and where to invest. These are the two factors that will be guided by the demand within the economy. Okay. So as it is, Indian economy has a huge demand based upon the population that it has. And 
as far as the uh, taste of the Indian consumer or the consumer preferences that are concerned. So that is also shifting towards the higher demand supply equilibrium or high price clearing levels. So we can push forward higher research and development, innovation and so on, right? So that way the investment is happening. Then is policy. The government's role essentially is talked through policy. So policy for any kind of economy should be stable and proactive. But not so much reckless that the economy is continuously into the shock cycle as it has been for a while in Indian economy. So that kind of stable and proactive policy is necessary so that the investment can continue in the given flow. Otherwise, always the investor has to first think ki uh, economy is going on, what is the policy of government, what is the uncertainty that the trouble in the economy ke aata hai. Now, moving on from income uh, investment to national income, there are two basic things that we have to consider and even if you look at the 2018 prelims paper, this basic that's called ICOR, incremental capital output ratio, that concept was asked. See, incremental capital output ratio is simply that if you go by the formula, capital divided by output, this is capital output ratio. Now incremental means that if I need one more output one more output in terms of units of output, how much more capital would I be spending for that one extra unit of output? So that is incremental capital output ratio. So if you look at the formula for growth rate within the economy, so that is rate of capital formation divided by ICOR. Rate of capital formation is essentially at what rate the productive assets are getting added to the economy and ICOR is a measure of efficiency of utilization of capital. Okay. So higher the ICOR in the economy, lower will be the efficiency. Basically, you will have to spend more money to get that one extra output. Lower the ICOR, better it is for the economy. Presently, ICOR for Indian economy is somewhere near 4. Okay. There has been a particular trend in ICOR. In the first five-year plan, we had around 2.7. Then it went to 6.4. Then it went to 4.1. You know, that's how the whole thing worked out. But anyhow, right now, at the end of 12th five-year plan, we had 4.1. So right now, we consider it around 4. Okay. Rate of capital formation is at what rate the productive assets are getting into your economy. Now, there is a particular document by Niti Aayog, the 75-year strategy document. In that, it has stated that if India wants to achieve a $5 trillion economy stance, then we have to raise our investment levels from the 2017 29% investment rate to 36% investment rate so that Indian economy can grow at around 9% essentially. See, right now if I put 36% investment rate here and ICR of 4%, so, 4, so it will be a 9% growth rate. That's where we are trying to go. But presently, this growth rate is where? It is hardly 5%. Yes? So since it is 5%, so that means our rate of capital formation is rather 20%. That's how the things are going in India right now. So rate of investments are really slow. We need to pick them up. That is why now the government steps in. Just in case the private sector by itself is not going to invest. The government has to come in with the fiscal stimulus. Yes or no? Then government starts investing within the economy through fiscal stimulus, through Canadian economics. You have seen uh, Operation Twist happening by RBI just now. If you want to know what is that, you can look at the other video that we have posted at the YouTube Subwipedia channel with respect to current affair. So, Government is now preparing to give another fiscal stimulus to Indian economy so that we can go up to the higher growth trajectory. So fiscal policy, monetary policy, everything coming together. So that you must see the other video that we already have that is on Operation Twist. So you will be able to understand better how this cycle is actually working and how we as individuals and government as the state is trying to push the economic growth in the country. All these aspects are critical to your economic growth being continuous. It is not a one-way direction. It is not just demand and supply. It's the whole mutually reinforcing virtue cycle. If all of these things remain positive, if they push each other like this, then your economic growth goes smoothly, sustainably and well for everybody. And it is inclusive as well. That has been our target since the 11th 5A plan 
to have an inclusive growth in India. All right. So if you have any questions with respect to this particular concept, you can email me and discuss the same. My email ID is Abhishek at the rate Abhimanu dot com. Thank you so much. We'll be coming soon with the next video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you get the next uh, concept delivered to you at the soon as soon as it is uploaded. Thank you so much.